Hi, my name is Tyler. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Look Lab Print. Now, what this is, is a film emulation DCTL by mononodes.com, and it works on a node base. So we have three nodes that you want to set up. That's Look, that's Lab, and that's Print. Now, Look is basically showing you a film negative, and you have the choices from 250D, 200T, and 500T. The lab is the basic grading process. It doesn't go over the color, but it goes over exposure and gamma and gain and lift, and it has saturation, subtractive saturation, a two-strip color process, bleach bypass, and much more. And on the print level, we will be choosing our print and these prints are based upon DaVinci Resolve's film stocks, but with some added bonus of changing the luminosity and shadows in the actual image and also the color from the print. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at it. Okay, now that we are on our color page, let's make sure our color management is correct. So you're gonna wanna make sure your color management is correct before you actually start adding clips to your image. My color management is already set up, but I'm gonna show you what I used. So under color management, we're gonna take a look at the color science, DaVinci YRGB, the timeline color space is DaVinci Y Gamma Intermediate, and the output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. This is gonna best set us up for the widest color space whenever we're actually grading, but you can output color space anything you want to and you can change the output color space on the color management whenever you want to i wouldn't recommend changing these once you've actually already started color grading and added clips to your timeline because it can mess with your image okay so we got that set up first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a color space transform from whatever camera that we're in to re camera color space and the reason we do this is look lab print works best in the RE log C3 color space. So we're gonna do a color space transform right here. And we go from DJI D gamma, DJI D log, cause that's the camera I'm working with, the DJI Ronin 4D. And we're gonna go to the RE wide gamma three in the RE log C3 color space. And nothing else changes from there. So we have that set up right here. And then next we have the look DCTL, we have the lab DCTL, and we have the print DCATL. So let's see how these work. The look, you have an option to choose from 200T, 250D, and 500T. The T stands for tungsten, the D stands for daylight balanced. So this just basically means, did you film in tungsten or did you film in daylight? What is your sensitivity of your camera? The 200 and 250 and 500, that's an ASA. So that is basically a film stock way of sensitivity. Think of it as an ISO or gain. Um, but today we're gonna choose 250D and this is turned off right now. And then we have the mono print. So the print's at the end and we're able to choose our print. And this is based upon DaVinci Resolve's film stocks. So we can choose D55 if we want to. So once we turn on the look, we see the 250D look and we can switch that around, say 200T or 500T, subtle changes. So we'll go with the 250D look and then we're gonna add on the print and we're gonna choose the Rec. 709 Kodak 2383D55 look. You can choose any of these right here, as you can see, but we're gonna go with that look for today. And then we will turn this on. And this is our starting point right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the lab portion in the center. And I'll press Shift F so you can see the image a little bit bigger. And this right here is the exposure. So we can change the exposure nicely. It works very similar to the HDR wheels exposure, if not exactly the same. Um, this is a very nice gradual exposure right here. And then we have the lift, which is closing the dark portions of the image and affecting that. Then we have the gamma, which is affecting the midtones. We have the gain, which is affecting the higher bright points of our image. 
And then we have contrast, which is affecting the overall contrast of the light and the dark. And we have the pivot that obviously changes the middle point of the contrast for you. So we get it where we would like. And then we have saturation, which adds a great gradual saturation for you. And then we have subtractive saturation, which essentially adds saturation, but removes luminosity at the same time, right? And then we have red density, which is essentially removing more of the luminosity and creating a richer colors. If you notice, the reds are getting darker, but the image is not getting brighter. And this is really up to you. You can tweak it around, you know, remove a little bit of saturation, add a little bit more density if you want to. If you have green image, green density, blue density, the deep slider is actually removing the density from the highlights, essentially, and just creating a little bit more of a balanced image. And the desat highlights will obviously desaturate the highlights however you want to. All right. And so we have that. We'll reload this and we'll take a look at the two strip color process. This is essentially a lot like Technicolor. Think of um, Wes Anderson. It's a two strip color process versus a three strip color process, which is um, the more popularized Technicolor. And essentially, this is going to be splitting the image in two defined colors. See, it's more on that pink and teal side right now. And this is a great look to use for, say, maybe if you're wanting to get a more low contrast image, you can be splitting the colors up, adding saturation, and just kind of creating this very specific, nice look that you want, right? Now that we reload this, and then the bleach bypass is another process in film. Um, usually it's not a complete bleach bypass. It's a little bit exaggerated. So basically it, it does less of the bleach process in film, basically being able to desaturate the image but create a higher contrast and grit. Right, so when we pull this bleach bypass up, we're creating a lot of contrast, and then we're removing saturation in this very gradual way. And what we can do is we can kind of pull back on the contrast itself a little bit, so it's not too crazy, and maybe change the pivot point so our image just looks a little bit better. And if we want to, we can add a little bit of saturation in there so it's not too heavy on that look and create, kind of create a middle ground in between that. Now, the next thing I want to look at is we'll, we'll reload this image to the original. I'll press Shift F again to go back to the nodes and we'll go to our actual print. So when we go back to our actual print, I'll press Shift F again. We can actually remove the color of the print itself. We can remove the luminosity of the print adjust that and we can also adjust the shadows of the print which is very nice and very gradual and we can also affect, affect the red green and blue of the shadows so we can kind of gradually bring these up we can taper them how we want to and just kind of create a specific look and we can take a look at the shadows off and on also what we've affected and if we want to use that actually. Um, it's very nice and we can take a look at the other prints also and just see the, the subtle differences between prints and Fujifilm is quite nice also. But yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Let's go back. If you want to do any grading for color, I recommend doing any other grading in between the lab and the print. You can also do any other grading, say right after the color space transform or right before it if you want to. I would experiment around and see what best works for you. But yeah, this is the basic setup of Look Lab Print.
All right. Well, thanks for joining me on the overview of Look Lab Print by mononodes.com. You can find it on the website and I highly recommend it. And if you learned something and you like the channel, like and subscribe, of course. I'll see you next time. Love you.